Welcome to another Pixlet tutorial and this one is also going to look at Pixlet tools and in particular the blur tool, the sharpen tool and the smudge tool. The blur tool softens an image and it makes an image obscure. The sharpen tool makes an image clearer. It sharpens around the edges of an image. And the smudge tool smudges and bumps pixels. It's like painting on the canvas. Right, so we've got two photos that uh, we're going to work with. And the first one is the, the picture of the dog, which needs some sharpening and a little bit of clean up. So we remove, there's a couple of white flecks there in the coat. And then we're going to take the dog out of that picture and put it into this picture, blur and smudge the foreground and then create a new image. So let's first of all close that one and start with the dog. So I'm going to duplicate the layer to protect the original and use the clone stamp tool to remove those three white spots. So selecting the clone stamp tool and control click just to select an area and holding the left mouse button down just remove those white spots and you might have to keep resampling just to get the colors similar. Now if I select the sharpen tool and it has only a couple of, of qualities you can change the brush size and the strength so if I change the brush to about 100 and then start sharpening by clicking, it starts to quickly deteriorate. You need to be very subtle in how you do the sharpening. So let's just undo that. And so perhaps with a smaller brush to sharpen the dog's eyes and perhaps the edges of the body. There is a, a better way to sharpen an image in Pixlr and that's to use a filter. Up in the filters menu there is a, a sharpen filter and an unsharp mask. If I select the sharpen filter, first of all let's just remove all the sharpens and then do filter sharpen and again you have the brush size and strength and it works similar to selecting the sharpen tool makes a mess pretty quickly of your image. Let's look at the unsharp mask. Up in filter, select unsharp mask and it gives you three different levels. An amount indicates how light the lighter pixels will be and how dark the darker pixels will be. The radius is the area that will be sharpened and the threshold is how much contrast between colors on the image does there need to be for the sharpening and it's just a matter of experimenting with different levels on each of these three sliders till you get the amount of sharpening that you want so if I cancel that there's nothing there now I'll go back and move the slider up and down too much because it starts to get very much like an etching Let's just make these at so 54 it's starting to look a bit sharper with the radius and quite a low threshold I think. Just a bit more because it's there's a bit of white there that I didn't need to be there. So I might keep it at those levels and then use the sharp tool 
to perhaps just go over the edges of the dog's body and sharpen those with a small brush size. before we actually cut the dog out of the background. So it's looking a bit sharper. You can sort of see in more detail the actual fur. Now I'm just going to save that image as, as a temporary image just in case something goes wrong. I can come back to that. Save it into that folder. And I want to remove the, the background from the dog. Now you can do that a number of ways in Pixlars. We've seen in previous lessons using the, the lasso tool to actually select it and then maybe the eraser to erase the background. Or the other way that I've discovered recently is using the site clippingmagic.com which removes the background from a image. And because this, this one's a, a quite complicated up here, well, there's all the, the fur, uh, I'm going to use Clipping Magic to do the removal. I'll open the image that I just sharpened into Clipping Magic. And what I want to achieve is a transparent image with just the dog and none of the background. And in uh, Clipping Magic, anything green we want to keep, anything red can be deleted. And different size brushes. And around the head, you might just have a close as possible to the edge to, to define the edge a clipping part. And as with anything, the more you use it, the more practiced you get. So uh, for me, this is quicker than trying to do this in Pixlr. If you go too close to the edge, there's a brush there to remove that line. So I'm going too close to the edge there. So I'm going to keep all of that. And I want to remove everything else So with a red line. And as I draw the red line, it starts to remove the background. Getting pretty close within a first pass, actually. Then we could experiment with the smoothing. So I'll try the smoothing of three, change the feathering, and the offset. And now start working with a small brush to five on actually getting into the edges a little bit more. And I can do it on here or I can actually go here. So there's some of the fur there that is missing across here. So with the green, put that back. And a little bit up here, put that back. Some here, I've gone too close to the edge. And then on the red one, I can either, actually go over here and just delete across there. It's a bit more fur here. And it doesn't need to be that perfect because it's going onto a background. Uh, fairly dark and busy background, so we're not going to notice too much. So it's not looking too bad. So I'm going to download that image, download the result, and it's now a transparent image. Let me name it. Doggy transparent. Go back into Pixlr. And close this one now and open the growth of trees because this is the image that I want to put the dog into. Then as a new layer, actually before I do that I'm going to duplicate that layer 
then open the image so that's the picture we just did and it's going to go the move tool it's going to go down the bottom here so I can just go a little bit down there anywhere where I've obviously missed something I can use the eraser tool to erase first of all I need to just resize it because it's a bit too big so under edit free transform if you hold the shift key down as you resize it retains its proportions so perhaps that big have a look by the changes it's not looking too bad and just with the eraser and a small brush any little part that's looking a bit out of place so now I want to make the dog stand out so using the blur and smudge tools to blur the foreground of all the, the green shrubbery and flowers make sure that you do this on the background copy so selecting the background copy and the blur tool and a fairly large brush at 100% strength start to blur you can see it starting to blur now the background not too worried about the trees so leave those as they are but the foreground really just want that blurred and you can see the difference if you look at on the left of the image to the right of the image it's much sharper so you want the dog to be standing out And then the smudge tool. And the smudge tool needs yeah, a smaller strength because if I do this from now, it really smears it and it doesn't look like any flowers there at all. So it needs to have a fairly low strength. So let's experiment put it down to 13. The brush size is okay. And just want to move that around a bit, even now it's still a little bit too much. So using the history to undo that and even lower strength. So you can it still needs to be recognizable as plants, but just a bit more smeared and blurred. So that the dog stands out. Um, I think I'm going to make that dog a little bit bigger. So selecting layer 2 and edit through transform, just make it a little bit bigger and apply the changes. And just erase, might save that. Dog in a grove of trees as a JPEG. Now you could do more with it as well. In the next video, we're going to look at how to use filters. And well, the background could be pixelated or have some noise. We could also have used the filter called Gaussian Blur. To blur the whole background. So in this video we looked at how to use the blur tool, the smudge tool and the sharpen tool as well as a mask and in the next video we're going to look at filters. That's all for now.